Hello, I'm Karen and today's video is um, a peg bag and what, the reason why I've chosen this is because over the weekend I actually broke my peg bag and so I crocheted like crazy and I made one and it was a bit bad <laughs> but um, because I just because I'd if I get you the other peg bag you can see <laughs> I'll explain what happened look I was trying to do the um, the tapestry crochet but as you can see my tension was too tight so I've got these indents that have happened there and so I just thought well I'm still going to use it and I just thought I'd share the hanger inside of this one is a free hanger that I got with a pair of jeggings and the hanger in this one is actually uh, I think I got this with a bra to be fair okay so um just a small hanger it's all you need i know this is they're probably what we're going to end up breaking in the wind and you just have to replace that but it's not a big big deal to find coat hangers we seem to have them all the time my flowers i wasn't sure if i turn out turn around my peg bag so you can see the full um scope of it all i wasn't sure whether to be putting flowers at the bottom or whether to have like three in a row and I thought if I just share with you the a plain one, then you can decorate your peg bag how you like. So um, I will still share how to make my flowers if you want me to. Um, I need, I'm just going to show you the measurements just so that you know for your coat hangers sake. So it's 11 inches wide and just over 12 inches long. Okay, so there's plenty of room you can get two packs of pegs in there probably even more if you wanted to and it's i've made it out of i'm just going to put that out of the way i've made it out of the sugar and cream cotton which is from canada and i feel a bit bad about that actually um you know because of everything that's been going off with all the wildfires and everything i think oh I don't know, there's no, I can't do anything from here except I have to send all my best to them and hope that everybody's okay and that all the, everybody's survived and I know that the houses of, um, a lot of them have lost their houses, ooh, <laughs> I was going to use this to be able to start at the beginning, <laughs> right then where is the beginning of this one, anyway, normally these ones work very well from the centre which that one's got going now so that's fine, but I'm going to be using, I'm going, this one is Robin's Egg. And I'm going to start off with this one and then uh, I'm going to use the Soft Violet and some White. So you're going to need three balls. So I suppose in one sense you can say, oh, it's going to be a little bit expensive to make a peg bag because it's going to work out to be about £7. But... You're worth it. It's time that you actually treated yourself and had something really nice. And then people, you know, because I say everybody that crochets, they tend to give everything away. And I think we need to make ourselves something nice. OK, so it's really easy. This is for um, all for my beginners as well. They can get along with this. This is something really easy. So to start off with, I'm just going to do my slip knot onto my hook. Um, and what we need to do, oh, by the way, I've moved my camera because of how big everything was and how and when I work along. Because what I'm going to do is I'm just get my peg bag back, little peg bag back a minute. I'm going to start you off with the blue, and then when I get to changing the white, <clears throat> I'm going to show you how to change over. Because let me just take out this hanger just so they can show you. Because I want to get all these details out of the way so that people understand how easy it is and we're we're making stripes which we want our stripes to be horizontal but because we're going around in a circle as we all know you end up like one side higher than the other so what i've done is i've designed this so that you actually change over and we can see my edge in there i get them a little, if i move it around like that I'm changing over on the edge so we've just got this little tiny step here yeah, so it's really, really barely noticeable so that when your peg bag's hanging up from behind, it's your lines are still nice and horizontal, okay? 
So uh, everything's going to be as easy as I can possibly make it. <clears throat> and we're just using um, single crochet if you're in America and a double crochet if you're in the UK and a slip stitch. They're the only stitches I'm using for the whole of the pattern, okay? And to start off with, we're going to do a chain of 40. And when you do this chain, do your chain a little bit looser than normal. Don't don't do it really, really tight because you want to work back into your chain. And when you're working with the cotton, it doesn't have the same give as um, the normal yarns that we've been using, okay? So it's just simply one, two, three, <clears throat> four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got a frog in my throat this morning. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Were <laughs> 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Okay, <clears throat> into the second chain from the hook. So we've got our little V's that come down. So that one there, the first V that I can see, that's the first one, and that's the second one. We're just going to work two single crochet at this end to start off with. So we do one, two. Then all we're going to do is we're going to single crochet all the way back down to the other end. And if you count this, there will actually be a total of 80 stitches when we've got all the way back round. And I do hope that you can bear with me and stay with me while I just do this first round or at least the first two rounds, just so that you can um, see where I'm going to let you know where you're going to begin and you're going to be, be ending your actual pattern so that when you need to change over your colour, it's going to be as easy as possible. For those of you that are really, really experienced and you're going to go, oh, yeah, 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 I know. I've just seen the picture of it. That's it. I'm fine. And you're going to just be able to go and make it and that's it. Then um, I'm really pleased that you can go and do that. But for those that can't and that are, um, that are newer to crocheting, then I want them to see that th this one is a lovely project. You don't. You don't need to be thinking about this one very much. You can just sit and relax and crochet and just really enjoy crocheting. No, no counting. Well, well, there is a little bit of counting because we need to count our rows. Um, I say, um, oh, I didn't show you actually. See this bit, this bit of yarn here, this white. That was all that was left over from a whole ball because I did the two stripes of white in it and it was the same with the blue there's um you end up with just a small amount left over but they're the sorts of things where we can make our flowers with and when we don't waste anything when we crochet so that's a good thing um i forgot what else i was going to tell you now did I tell you this? <laughs> I tried to start this video before and I was like, um, have I said this or have I said that? And I really, really don't know. But um, I say, I've, I've been, it was last May I started, I, I started to share my crochet things properly because my, my actual first ever video was a crochet thing. But I just did that just to actually test my camera and everything so that I was because I was actually preparing myself to do my cake toppers and then as time went by I thought I, do, I don't know I was so proud of those little slippers with the bows on them I thought you know what I'm going to share them because I think it's something different it's not something that you see like that and I wanted something to go with the little cardigan that I make because 
um, ever since I learned how to crochet, I make um, little cardigans and I send them off to the special care the special care baby unit. And I just wanted some slippers that was just really, really, just so delicate and pretty to go with it. Right, um, I'm just going to stop that story for a minute. <clears throat> at the end of my chain, at the end, of, at this end of the chain, we're going to work three single crochet. So we're doing one, two, and we're just working on tuck that knot and everything around underneath the other side. So we've done three. And now what we're going to do is we're going to work back along the chain. And we're going to work into the stitches. Just put my hook over there. The stitches that have come over the top. So that stitch, this stitch here, that's going to be my first stitch back down my chain. Yeah. And then all of these stitches, I'm just going to go just underneath. And because you were, it's kind of, you like, uh, it's almost like you have to go back to front a little bit with your hook just to we know at the beginning bit because these always seem to be a little bit I don't know whether it's a little bit tight a bit awkward or but I know once you get going further down the chain it's not so bad but right at the corner it always seems to be just that little bit more complicated but other than that I mean this is the worst of the complications you're going to get in this okay um, and I will tell you as well, when you're actually working with this particular pattern, what's going to happen with the shape as you're actually building it is that it's not going to look like a bag for quite a while. Um, what's going to happen is your ends will start curving first, so they'll start to curve up, but the, the centerpiece will still stay flat. So it, it'll be a strange shape to start off with, and then it'll all of a sudden it'll just be folded over and it'll just be the bag shape and um it's really nice so it's really nice and easy simple thing to do and you also i would say that well i do personally anyway i need to relax more when i'm working with the actual cottons and i don't need to have my tension so tight because if i make it too tight i, I really struggle to get my hook through the stitches so that's why I said to you not to do your chain too tight in the very very beginning and see it's just say this one is this is there's no no counting involved you're just going to be able to sit and crochet away and your friends will be able to talk to you and you you can talk back and um it's an I suppose this is a nice one if, if you go to one of those little groups um I don't know what they call them for crochet, but if, if you go for a knitting one, it's called a knitting and natter. <laughs> it, well, it is round here anyway. Um, oh, did you hear that? It is round here. Oh, I'm common as muck, me. <laughs> oh, it's my Nottingham accent coming through there. <laughs> I did a test, you know, that was really funny. I did a test online where they actually did all these Nottingham words to sit and to see if you could translate them. <laughs> and I got 19 out of 20. So I was like, oh. Yep, I know all the slang words round here. But well, I've grown up in Nottingham. It's um it's a very interesting place to grow up, I think. And I think that we've watched things change, you know, I mean everybody does over the years, wherever they live, but um we was very much was very much a oh I don't know how to explain that. Because it sounds like I'm being rude. I'm not. We was very much of a country where we was just... We, you, you very, very rarely saw somebody who was from a different country. Everybody from here was from here. I mean, we did get Irish people. Um, but while I was growing up, I never actually saw anybody from a different ethnic background. The only time I saw them was on the TV. Right up until I was a teenager. And then when I was a teenager, there was this lovely girl at school. She was um, from Iran. Oh, she had the most beautiful hair. Um, sorry, I'm just, just, you need to do one more single crochet right in the end. You're not doing in the hidden stitch this time. It's right in the end there. And then we need to slip stitch to the beginning. And um, I forgot to tell you, we need some contrasting yarn. And I've got the same colour blue on there. 
uh, I'll just get a little bit of this green. Oh, I can't even find the end of that. <laughs> there it is, hiding from me. We don't need much. I'm just getting this, just this bit here. This is to help you later on when you're actually making your, your work. If you just put your hook through there, through the end, or the next bit down, it's definitely need it in this end. This is to remind you, because you know when you're going around and around and around in a circle, you start to get confused of where the beginning and the end is. And this tail here, as you're working, is going to end up being inside. Okay? But, and even though that you did begin from there, this is going to be your beginning and your end. This is your changeover point. So this is why this is here, so that when you get around... To wanting to change your colours you're going to do it at this point at this side where this your contrasting yarn is and now from this point onwards all you're going to do is just work single crochet all the way around you're not going to do any more slip stitching to join it or anything like that it is just purely single crochet around and around and around or if you're in England it's a double crochet round and around and around um, but anyway, I must tell you, there was this this girl, she was beautiful. She was from, um, I'm sure she was from Iran or Iraq. And one of those places, and she had the, the like absolutely stunning hair. It was so, so long and it was so black and glossy. It was just absolutely beautiful. Um, and me being me, <laughs> I had my hair cut really short and um, I had fair hair then. So sort of, what do they call it? A strawberry blonde. <laughs> um and um and she really wanted to have her hair cut, but because of the family's background and everything, the, the parents didn't want her to have a hair cut. But after I'd been invited round for tea and I'd had tea with them, the dad actually changed his mind and um and he let her have a hair cut. And I mean, it looked gorgeous when she had it cut, don't get me wrong, but like, oh, it was so, so beautiful. And I often wonder now, you know, like now, because I moved, I moved areas and um, she didn't go to the same school as me anymore. She went to a private school and I just wondered whatever happened to her and did she decide to grow her hair again or did she keep it short or I don't know, just funny little memories that you have from... But she was my first ever, um, the first ever person that I knew that was really, from you know, like from abroad like that, that she she was born abroad, she wasn't born, born in England. Um, and now, now when we walk down the streets, it's like there's so many different shops and the smells of all the different foods because now we cater for well they cater <laughs> we don't because we don't know how to cook their food to be to be honest um well probably some of you do you know don't get me wrong i'm i'm not i can i can i can cook a few italian dishes and i can cook um a few nice little bits but i'm not really <laughs> we're not adventurous in our family <laughs> we're very very plain and simplistic when it comes to food but uh yeah, so now, now here we are, like, and here I am, sharing this with the whole wide world where you're all, like, from different places, with, with different, um, different points of view, different ways of living, and, and yet we've all got this in common. We all crochet, and I think that's, like, it's so, so cool. It, I really, really do enjoy it. And I know I'm waffling away and I'm nearly on 20 minutes. Probably those <laughs> those people that don't like to listen to me waffle about stuff are like, oh my God, here she goes again. <laughs> and then the other ones that like, and they're like, hmm, that's a weirdo story today, Karen. But I don't know, it's just like randomness pops into your head. It's like I have to tell you one thing though before you go. Um, I uh, had a new delivery of my yarn today and the post lady bless her uh she's she's oh, she's wonderful i'm sure I'm, I'm really sure that she she must be polish um she's absolutely beautiful to look at she has this fabulous accent and um and today 
she, when she brought my thing because I, I didn't she was like she got a massive beaming smile on her face and she gave me my bag with all my yarns in it and I thanked her and everything and then afterwards I realized because it actually says Karen's YouTube <laughs> on the outside of our packaging and I was thinking I wonder if she's like wondering like what am I doing on YouTube I wonder if she because obviously she's read it and she knows um but she is she's absolutely fantastic I really like her um yeah she is she's beautiful but anyway um all of this all about beautiful different people i don't know it's just a this must be something in the air today <laughs> so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to keep on going round and round i will tell you because look what happens is is you, it's is it's you getting you i don't know you sort of, sort of almost lose that central point for a little while but you can see you've got it's nice and even once you've actually got 10 rows all the way round that's when you need to change colour. Okay, so if you want to just carry on and do um, two round, two, two rounds, 20 rounds um, of, because I'll, I'll show you, I'll go back to the bag just one more time, sorry. Let's just show you. If you do, because here, look, um, I, will, I will work my 10 rounds and I will actually, I will come back and I'll do another video and I'll show how I change over my colours here. For those of you that are confident and that can do it, that's fine. I want you to work up to there, but you've got, you've got to stop here before we start working on this section. Because this section is different and I will show you how you do it so that you get your even colour still, okay? So, thank you for watching, thank you for liking, thank you for subscribing, thank you for me to listening to me waffle about things like the post lady today, <laughs> um, an old, an old um, some, well, I can't I say she was a friend, she was a friend at school, um, but she, I say we both moved, so it's just, um, when you're children, you don't, you don't tend to keep in touch like that, do you, which is such a shame really, but, um, anyway, so there we go. Okay, so thank you for watching, thank you for liking, thank you for subscribing. For those that want to come back and watch part two, I'm going to do some little stages all the way up um, just to give you the, make it as easy as possible, okay? Bye for now.